this is a follow-up video where I continue using the model I introduced in a previous video, uh, which was a, a simple agent-based simulation model in which I created a two-dimensional grid and populated it with agents of um, type A and type B. In this case, um, agents of type A have the green color and um, the blue dots are agents of type B. And I can now use this model to simulate um, battle rounds and then I can see um, which group wins the, the fight um, uh, depending on certain parameters. In this video I will just go through a simple simulation run where I will not be varying any parameters so I will not be conducting an experiment using the simulation model. This is something I will be doing in a follow-up video. But just as a quick uh, reminder for this model, <coughs> an agent um, is defined as a class that has a, a set of attributes an agent has a life score that defaults to 100, and uh, an agent also has a X and Y coordinate that is basically the, the cell within the two-dimensional battlefield grid. And an agent belongs to a certain group, which is um, characterized by this group string attribute. The battlefield is um, defined as a two-dimensional array using list comprehension in, in, in Python. Um, another thing I did was I created this helper function, which I used to populate the battlefield with a group of agents. Um, in these lines of codes, I then um, use the helper function to create two groups of agents, um, being group A and group B, and populated the two-dimensional battlefield with these groups. And um, I then visualized the initial um, battlefield uh, setup using matplotlib in, in Python. And now I will be conducting a, a simple simulation run with some um, core uh, conditions. Um, those core conditions are that agents of group A and group B in this case have slightly different attack strategies. So an agent of type A will be allowed to look within his neighborhood and um, he will always try to attack the same agent um, within his neighborhood. So for each round he will always try to target the same enemy until that enemy is eliminated. Agents of type B, they will uh, also be allowed to look within their neighborhood, but they will be attacking uh, a randomly selected agent within that neighborhood, being a random, uh, randomly selected enemy. Some other conditions or, or definitions of this model are that each iteration um, represents uh, a round. And each round, all agents that are still alive are allowed to attack one enemy. Um, the neighborhood of an agent is, in this um, video, defined as having a diameter of 10 cells, no, a, a radius of 10 cells. So if we, for example, take one agent here, um, the blue dot here, um, the neighborhood would be defined as 10 cells into this direction, 10 cells into that direction, and then basically this forms a square with a, you could say, radius of, of 10. And this would be the, the neighborhood of the respective agent. So if we have an agent here at the border, um, it will basically be half a square. So this is how the neighborhood is defined of an of a agent. And in this case, it's, um, it has a, a radius, you could say, of, of 10 cells. Then an agent dies when life score goes below um, zero. And at the end of each round, all agents um, that have been eliminated are removed from the battlefield. The attack damage of an agent is um, uniformly um, distributed between 10 and 60. And yeah, those are basically the, the, the core conditions of this model. And I'm now simulating 50 rounds um, in, this, in this model, um, letting those two groups of agents um, conduct uh, 50 iterations of battles. And this is basically what I'm doing in, in, in these lines of codes. In a follow-up video, I'm going to um, clean up the code a little bit and, and put <coughs> parts of the code into functions so that the functions become reuse, reusable. Um, and I will demonstrate that in a follow-up video. Um, I think if you're interested in this, you can click on the link in the video description and it takes you um, to the to the coding example for this video, and you can try to see how I implemented 
basically the two um, attack strategies and also the other core conditions. Um, but maybe just to to dig into the uh, um, the way I implemented the attack strategies was for agents of type A. I have a deterministic algorithm for how they are supposed to search in their neighborhood. So they will start looking at the first row in their neighboring square and then they go through it row by row until they find the first enemy still alive and then they will attack that enemy. So it's a dis deterministic algorithm uh, which is conducted in the same way for each iteration and thereby I'm ensuring that each agent of type A will always attack the same agent in each round until that agent is eliminated. For agents of type B, I have a random selection um, strategy. So um, in this case, the agent will look within his neighborhood um, and select an enemy at random and attack that enemy. And that's basically it. Um, I'm conducting 50 rounds, as I said. After each round, I'm, I'm removing the, uh, the agents that have a life score of, e uh, of um, zero or below zero. And um, at the end of those 50 simulation rounds, I'm plotting the end result again. And that's what you can see here. So what you see in this plot are all the agents that are still alive. Um, in this case, we can see we have a group formation. Um, um, yeah, but since we didn't conduct a controlled experiment, you could say we, we didn't uh, vary parameters, we didn't conduct a sensitivity analysis. Um, we can basically still not um, approve or um, disapprove um, any hypothesis that we may have formed. Um, so this is just to show you um, how basically you can set up a, a, a simple agent-based simulation and um, how you can use matplotlib to, to plot the development of your, your, um, your in this case, two-dimensional grid world. Um, I could also add uh, additional plots that contain information like uh, charts, um, distributions. And this is something I'm going to be doing in a follow-up video um, where I'm also going to be varying some, some parameters so that we can conduct a sensitivity analysis and we can try to um, make some, create some findings uh, with regards to which kind of parameters have what kind of effect on the battle outcome. Um, yeah. If you found this interesting, as I said, you can find a link in the video description and, and, and there you will be taken to um, the, the coding um, example uh, behind this video.